So I'm going to talk to you today about hacking the future. Um, so yeah, I'm Linda, and I just wanted to tell you the story about Code Club. Um, have you ever like gone to the pub and gotten a bit tipsy and bought a domain name? <laughs> like, this is kind of like that. Um, so yeah, for the last uh, year and a little bit, I've been uh, teaching primary school children how to program because the government isn't. And I just want to share with you what I uh, learned from that. Um, but back uh, to the beginning. So in March 2012, I uh, went to the pub with my friend Claire. And we wanted to organize a hack day because we were a bit fed up with the hack days that were happening in London at that time. They were all about, oh, come here and impress your peers and pitch to these investors. And that's not why I do hack days. Like, I like to get together with my friends and do fun stuff. Um, so we wanted to do a hack day of our own. Um, and I don't know if you can see that, but like behind the bear glass that it says, uh, change the world. Uh, so that was basically just our plan, like have a hack day that we would focus on changing the world uh, rather than um, impressing investors. Uh, and at the time in the UK, there was a lot of talk about how the ICT curriculum in schools sucked. Uh, so Eric Schmidt had done a talk in Edinburgh where he basically accused the UK of throwing away its computing heritage by not teaching programming in schools. And ever since, the media has been like, oh, I see teacher, uh, teachers suck and they only teach PowerPoint. And um, so that was kind of, uh, although we were meant to be organizing a hack day, we were kind of ranting about that. Um, and so we thought that we could invite kids over to our hack day and get them enthusiastic and into computers. Uh, but the more we thought about it, the more we thought that that would be kind of cruel because we'd get them there and we have an awesome time and they'd love it and then they would go back to school and learn how to make uh, you know, spreadsheets. And uh, that would be mean. Um, so the more we had to drink, uh, <laughs> The, the bigger our kind of problem uh, became. Uh, this bear, by the way, Colonel IPA is my favorite. I really recommend it. Uh, it's quite alcoholic, uh, it, which might be uh, how we managed to get to this uh, next idea that we came up with, which was inspire kids to learn to code. Um, and we had this idea that we would send professional programmers into schools one hour a week to teach the children. Um, and yeah, we launched uh, with a single tweet, uh, <laughs> nationwide network, that was the alcohol talking. <laughs> um, and yeah, exciting times. And then what we didn't expect uh, to happen uh, was the day after uh, this. Uh, <laughs> so we tweeted a tweet and then it got picked up and it was in Wired and BBC Tech. Like, um, after school code clubs planned to teach kids programming. Uh, how is that news? <laughs> um, maybe it was a slow news day. Uh, but yeah, uh, we basically didn't have anything. It's like, it's what it says. It was planned, we, we had an idea. Uh, but now that it had been on Wired and BBC, we pretty much had to do something, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, it was, it was uh, way poor at the, at the time, but uh, we quickly got together and wrote some basic uh, lesson plans of uh, what it might be. This is uh, Claire, she's not a programmer, uh, so with like enough hairy bow and some whiskey that is like a, a um, simulating a kid, like to test out. <laughs> um, just to test out like if the, if the lessons worked. So I wrote some lessons and, and tested them on, on Claire. Um, and we made these uh, activity sheets. Uh, we made like um, nine projects um, and uh, with Scratch, which is this uh, awesome programming language developed at MIT specifically for uh, teaching uh, kids how to program. And we tried to make them fun, like this uh, desert race here is like animating a farting lion and other things that we thought kids might like. Um, 
So the nice thing about Scratch is that you don't have to do any typing. You just put together uh, these uh, blocks. Uh, um, they fit together like a, a puzzle, uh, so you don't have to worry about uh, syntax and things like that. Uh, but they're still learning uh, proper programming. I mean, there's like uh, logic and operators and if statements and things that they have to do. Um, and then we took them into 20 primary schools to test out our uh, curriculum that we've just made in a hurry. Um, and it's basic user testing. Like, this is what I was used to for my job, right, in the web world. Um, you, you make your thing and then you see how the users are using it and then you improve it and then you iterate and then you do it over and over. Um, and we also did a lot of research. Uh, this is a really good book, by the way. So we were doing uh, sort of, you know, what are kids into? Um, and we also developed our own uh, metrics of what uh, would be a successful project. So we measured like the amounts of smiles and fist bumps and high fives and laughter. Uh, and also at the end of uh, each project, we would ask the kids on a scale from zero, pretty boring, to 100, the most awesomest fun I've had in my life ever. How fun was this lesson? And we're very proud to say that uh, we are 92% fun. <laughs> So, I mean, you just can't argue with that kind of statistics, right? Like, that's <laughs> science. Uh, so, when we were in the pub, uh, we were thinking that, you know, maybe we'll start with, like, a club each. Maybe we'll have two, or maybe we even have five. Uh, but uh, what happened uh, was this. Uh, <laughs> So that's over 18,000 children who are learning to program at the moment in uh, one hour a week. Uh, and 40% of those are girls, like 40. Um, we did have some help along the way, and I have a video that you might not be able to hear at all. I mean, I can try to. Uh, get the microphone down to the uh, laptop. I don't even know where the sound comes out of these things. Like computers, how do they work? Uh, <laughs> Your name? My name is Niklas Sjöström. So why would you like to work at Code Club? I have made a few um, software, done um, something called Skype. I think I have Anything a else? Well, I have a few others, but they were not as big, but... Uh, my name is Joanna Shields. Uh, what do you think you can do for Code Club? I was chief executive of a company called Bebo. Justin Bebo? Um, no, actually a company called Bebo. Mm. Next. As you know, Code Club is an after-school activity aiming to teach children the basics of coding. What do you think you bring to the table? Well, I'm Chad Hurley. I uh, created YouTube. Oh, I know. Did you, did you do that one where the baby bites the other baby's finger? No, I, d I don't make videos. Next. Tessa Jal. Actually, it's Dame Tessa Jal. Next. Tell us a bit about yourself, Brent and Martha. Um, we, 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 we started, started lastminute.com. Last Next. Uh, Sit down. What's your name? I'm Tim Berners-Lee. What do you think you bring to the table? I invented the, the World Wide Web. Anything else? Anything else? Well, uh, Next. Um, we were hoping for Prince Harry to be honest with you, Mr. Windsor. So why would you like to work for Code Club? I think it's a, a, a very useful skill. Uh, for particularly for people like yourselves and young people and I think it opens up huge opportunities in the future and I suppose I know some influential people like who my mother your highness Uh, but yeah, it's uh, really quite simple. Uh, we send volunteers, uh, usually professional programmers, into venues 
that are usually schools because uh, schools already have children and computers, which are the two things we need, really. And uh, we give them projects uh, that are already tried and tested. They don't have to prepare anything, uh, and they just go into the school and teach it. And we opened this up uh, in, to every school um, September last year, so uh, it's really just been a little bit over a year. Uh, and the volunteers, like, they love it as much as the kids. Like, seriously, never mind the children. What about the code club effect on volunteers? All rave on about being impressed, excited, and having amazing fun. Uh, forgot how infectious uh, children's enthusiasm is. Uh, code club is pretty fun. Looking forward to the next one. Uh, calling it their uh, midweek morale boost. Um, and yeah, today's code club is ace. Uh, budding hackers, in proper sense of the word, abound. Um, so uh, obviously you should all volunteer, uh, <laughs> and the kids the kids love it too. Um, so yeah, I keep getting accosted by ten year old girls asking if they can join. Uh, oh, and P.S. Code Club is awesome. We started at one class and had to double to two in just half a term. Might even triple if we find enough resources. Um, so this is actually a bit of a problem that we have. So when the code clubs start up, they'll have maybe 10 kids in them, and then uh, the kids start making games, and then they get a unique URL for their game, and then they start sharing that uh, game with their friends, and then their friends uh, play the game that their friend made, and then they also want to be able to make games. Uh, and so, um, the code clubs very quickly become oversubscribed. All of a sudden, everyone in the school wants to do it, uh, which is cool, but it's also a problem because, um, yeah, there's long waiting lists for all the code clubs, and I get very sad emails from parents saying, oh, my son or daughter really wanted to go to code club, but it's full. What do I do now? Please help. Um, and also another problem we have is that there are lots of schools who want to do this, but they don't find a volunteer. Uh, so actually, uh, there are currently over 500 schools in the UK who really want to do Code Club, but I don't have a volunteer to do it. Um, so we tried to solve this in various ways. Uh, for instance, uh, we're allowing teachers to do it on their own without a volunteer. Like, um, they can learn alongside the kids. And, you know, we wrote this for nine-year-olds. I think most adults can uh, <laughs> learn uh, from our projects. They can learn alongside uh, them. Uh, we do have workshops for adults who want to run a code club where we basically just show them Scratch. And we're not really even teaching them programming. We're just giving them the confidence that they can go in and do this. Um, and as a result, we actually have uh, over 600 teachers doing this in school time um, instead of the uh, non-existent curriculum, uh, which is uh, actually quite terrifying because, yeah, we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> but uh, we get some good feedback from, from the teachers. Um, so they say things like, uh, the kids have learned to test and work to solve problems and not just accept that there is only one way of achieving something. Uh, there has been a marked difference in the way that Code Club members approach problem solving, a more analytical approach, and a way of seeing mistakes or errors as part of the process of learning. Um, they are much more willing now to help each other solve problems and to try to find solutions before looking to me for help. Uh, seeing their confidence and willingness to take risks has been the best bit. Or engagement has improved and it incited a new lease of creativity and optimism. Um, so, when I first went to uh, one of the pilot schools and one of the teachers told me that uh, all the kids that were in code club were all of a sudden better at maths, I was very skeptical because first of all, we don't teach any maths. And second of all, it just sounded like something they wanted to say that sounds good in the media or something. Uh, but they kept uh, insisting on it, and we kept getting feedback like, uh, like this. Uh, and one thing that I noticed a lot of teachers said, like, in fact, I think all of them said that the kids that do code club don't raise their hand as much, uh, which is a bit weird. 
Um, but after some investigation, we found out that um, usually what happens uh, if a kid doesn't know how to solve a problem is they will ask for the formula, except that the Kids That Do Code Club has learned that you can experiment and you can try things, and if you get it wrong, that's okay. Um, and that's just part of the learning process. Like, the best, like the best thing for me has been um, that seeing mistakes and errors are part of the learning process. You'd think that this would be something that schools would teach already, but apparently not. Like in the school, a mistake is the worst thing you can make. And when you make a mistake, you get told that you are wrong. And even just like the language of this is like, um, say a kid is like hitting their sibling, oh, you are wrong, don't do that. And then you use the same language to say, oh, you got this um, uh, math question wrong. It's like, did, it, did, did you do something bad? <laughs> um, and I think a lot of kids, when they make a mistake, they just try to forget about it as quickly as possible. They might even feel uh, embarrassed or even ashamed. And I think that like, as teaching kids to program isn't really about the programming at all. It's more about the mindset and how to learn and how to uh, break things down into sub-processes. So that has been one of my favorite bits. Um, and also the collaboration, because in schools, um, obviously you need to test the kids, right? You have exam boards and you don't have that much collaboration because that way you don't know who did what and you can't assign them the appropriate grades. Um, but that's not how the world works. And the thing that I really like about uh, Scratch, for instance, is that you can see anyone's code and you can take it and you can build upon it and you can um, like add to it. Like you can, you can literally fork someone's Scratch project. <laughs> and uh, I think that is a much uh, better way of, of learning. Um, <laughs> and also they get to be uh, really creative. Uh, so my first code club was great. The kids decided they wanted to make a game about a tomato that kidnaps an onion and is started by a cheese. Like, I, I just love things like this. This is what keeps me going, basically. Um, so we open sourced our stuff uh, a little while back. Uh, so we don't just teach Scratch. We, we then go on to uh, making websites as their first typing experience. They're very slow in the beginning. You know, they have to learn to type. Uh, but um, browsers are quite forgiving, so it doesn't matter that much if they make a mistake. Um, and then we go into Python, and we try to appeal to the volunteers as much as the kids, sometimes just to get more volunteers. Uh, so we actually started with uh, Logo in Python. Uh, I don't know if you remember Logo, maybe from your school. Um, but it's like little turtles, and it's built in in Python. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, uh, and it's, it's really nice because uh, the kids really relate to the turtle. So you get a turtle on the screen that you can move around. Uh, but when we ask them things like, uh, make a triangle, they can just move in real space. Like they can be like, okay, so how would I do a triangle? Or I would move this way, and then I turn, and then I move that way. And it makes it a lot easier for them to break it down into steps. Uh, and then we also have this uh, A to Z uh, activity slash coloring book. Um, so for instance, uh, we have T for Turing, and it will have like some description of Turing, and then you can color in Turing, and there are lots of rainbows in the background. And it's probably illegal in Russia, but... Uh, <laughs> never mind. Um, but. Uh, the Scratch curriculum has already been translated into 10 languages, which is awesome. Uh, we'd like to see more collaboration, though, like more people contributing back. So occasionally we get volunteers to do like special, uh, like a special Christmas code club activity sheet or something, and they can contribute it back and then we can distribute it to all the other code clubs. Um, I'd really like to see more teachers get involved because although we have a lot of programmers getting involved, we're not really able to uh, pull on all the knowledge that teachers have 
and they are quite scared of GitHub. Uh, I, I tried, but uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it, I, I would really like something more user friendly that even teachers would be able to use and then use for sharing lessons. Like teachers are always complaining they're overworked, right? And they are. Uh, you'd think that they want to share lessons. Um, but yeah, if anyone can help me with that, like, like please. <laughs> Um, so, uh, the reason uh, I do this is because I get to see things like this. I mean, this is a website that a 10 year old made about their love for chinchillas. And it is just like one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. <laughs> like, have you seen a chinchilla? Then you are cool. Yeah, <laughs> I totally agree. <laughs> Uh, so obviously, uh, all children should have the opportunity to uh, express their love for chinchillas or whatever they are into. Uh, so that's why we decided uh, two months ago to uh, launch uh, Worldwide. Um, so yeah, taking over the world. We didn't have enough to do, so we thought we'd add some, add some things. Um, and yeah, it's been it's been going okay. Uh, we're not in Antarctica yet, but besides from that, uh, well, no, there aren't really any kids in Antarctica, but uh, we were thinking of maybe sending some robots over there that the kids' kids uh, control remotely or something, just so we can say that we're on all the continents, like that would be a much cooler thing to say, right? Um, yeah, I, I'm sure I actually forgot to say loads of things. Uh, so if you have uh, any questions, maybe <laughs> I can answer them instead. I always forget to say the most obvious things. Um, yes. Uh, so is, do you see Code.org as competition for you guys, or like, how do you collaborate with that project that's getting launched? Uh, yeah, so I'm not entirely sure what code.org does. As far as I know, it's like a website where they list what other people do. Is that accurate? I might be wrong. Um, yeah, so um, we just want people to take our projects and go to their nearest school and start teaching some kids. Uh, you don't have to prepare any lessons. We've taken care of that. We've tested it so that uh, you can be confident that the kids will love it uh, and they'll have fun doing it. And really, we just need... You don't even need to do, like... Uh, <laughs> you don't, don't even need to do much programming. It's like... You're just there to, to help if they have a question and you don't just provide the answer. You just poke them a bit. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's quite simple, really. All right, what's the aim range here? So we started with 9 to 11 because, well, we were in the pub and we felt we had to start somewhere and none of us have kids and we didn't really know. But we figured at uh, 9 they already know how to read and do some basic logic so we didn't want to have to also worry about that. Um, like, we'd like to do more. We were constantly asked to do for secondary schools or for younger. Um, but, like, we are three people full time. <laughs> um, and we just don't have the time or money uh, to do more. If we had some more people, um, we, could, we could do for expand the, the thing. Or if more people contributed to, like, lessons on GitHub, that would be cool too.